Hi, I'm Georgian, and we're back with part three of this series that we started about how I grew up with the communists and how in spite of the programming and brainwashing, I met Jesus and how it all happened, how I escaped from communism and came to America. And uh, I, I, I left off with, with saying how I, I had an experience with heaven, how I actually got inside heaven, a supernatural, the heaven the opens, and I went in, in the throne room, and I experienced the fire of God falling on me. And it was amazing because I wasn't prepared for that. And, 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 but I did, I did get this fire of God, and it's like love, you know, fire. The, it's fiery love. Song of Solomon talks about love like flame, like passion, you know, because God is a consuming fire. His love is consuming. You know, when you go to heaven, you see that His love is I incredibly consuming, but we'll be equipped to handle it because we have a special bodies, glory bodies in heaven. Here is, is almost too much. It's like fire, like love, but just too much, too hot, you know. God is very hot, I'm telling you. And so, uh, anyway, so I got uh, baptized, like a brand that, like, 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 poosh, he put his, his name on me. He branded me like, I belong to you, and you belong to me. And once that love hits you, you can never go back on it. And it's like, it's, you, you become loyal to this love, and, and his love never lets you go. That's why there's a scripture in the Bible that says, nothing will separate us from the love of God, love of Christ, not the love of God is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from that love. And he, he showed his love on the cross when he was allowed to be crucified for you and for me. You know, so we can be in his arms today. So that's the love that hit me. And, and I, I pray to hit you. It's totally available. It, might, it could have hit you. Let me know. You can email me and let me know. You can respond. We'd love to hear from you, your experience. But... That's what happened to me, and so all of a sudden, I dropped everything I was doing. Forget Hollywood, you know. I told you in the last series how I wanted to go to Hollywood, pursue a rock and roll career. No more. I don't want to be famous. I don't want rock and roll. I just wanted to know more about God's love. So I just took a vacation from life and began to study the Word, begin to study the Bible. I mean, you don't realize here how could Bibles everywhere, but in Bulgaria, the communists burned all the Bibles and destroyed Bible presses. Everything that we cannot, so that we young people cannot see it. You know, because once you start seeing and read, you're going to find out the truth about who you are. You know, so now all of a sudden somebody gave me a Bulgarian Bible because I couldn't read English. And I started reading the Bulgarian Bible slowly. It took me close to a year. You know, and I didn't care. I took like eight to ten hours a day. Just nothing but reading the Bible. Well, every story is just so precious. Kind of like you looking at your family album of your relatives, you know, like, like in your inheritance, like I connected with who I was, you know. Remember I told you I didn't have a dad to grow up, so I felt like a little disconnected. But when I read a story about Abraham, oh, he's like my father. This is my father too. The Bible says he's a faith father, you know. And then he, he's not only the father of the Jewish race, but also, everybody that believes in Jesus now gets grafted in that same vine, in the same promises, in the same special family tree through faith. We, end, we, we get blessed like Abraham and his, his offspring, Isaac. We get the same blessing, you know. That's why we laugh sometimes because Isaac's name is laughter. <laughs> and so it hits you now and then who you really are. And the joy of the Lord hits you. And you begin to be, to be because we are like Isaac. That's what the Bible says. We're the same, we have the same status like Isaac. You know, we get all the promises and we get the inheritance and God has promised through us to, to, to rule the world, to rule the earth through us, you know, and rule with joy, rule with love, rule with mercy and compassion and forgiveness and peace, you know. So all these rich inheritance things that are in, in, was it for Isaac is now for us. Of course, it's all about Christ. You know, Christ is the ultimate offspring. You know, and, and so anyways, but I just wanted to finish telling you about um, what happened to me. I was reading the Bible and I became really close with God and I had intimate experience. If you, if you spend an hour a day, even as much as an hour a day, you'll, you'll find out amazing things will happen to you. Start getting really close to God. You get to know Him and get to, uh, you know, because like, like God loves to visit you. Like He visited Abraham several times. Several times He visited Abraham. And Abraham responded to God. In fact, one day he told Abraham, uh, Abraham told God, he says, sit down, God, you know, and you, you are going on a big journey and you're going to get hungry. 
so you need to sit down and eat and I'll feed you. I mean, I don't know anything about God. I'm learning, right? I'm fresh from communism. So everything the Bible says, it teaches me what God is like. So I'm going, I says, God, I didn't know you eat. <laughs> I thought you in heaven, you don't eat there. I like your spirit. But, but in this case, he, he materialized it here. He showed up in Abraham. And God says, I'll feed you. God goes, okay, I'll wait. So back then, it takes a long time to fix the food. You know, it's not like a Burger King take out, you know. This is the king of kings. We got to fix him from scratch, you know. So they kill the calf and they slaughter him. It's a process, like probably five, six hours by the time you cook it. And God said all along all that, and I'm looking at this story. And look, when you, when you really start to read the word many hours a day, you know what happens? This becomes almost as real, if not more real, than your n natural world around you. I tell you, I actually travel in time. Like, God, I just not just read a story, but I go inside. Like you go there, like God sends me there, and I see, I see, I was right there as he was cooking the food. I can smell the food. God is looking, I'm looking at God, looking at Abraham, and I see this thing like being replayed. And then I ask God, I says, God, you so busy, you're the God of the universe, but you take time for this guy to feed you. What's up with that? And God goes, well, how else can you become a friend? You got to spend time, right? Friendship takes time. Like when you want somebody to be a friend, what do you do? Call them on the phone, hang out, go for coffee or hang out and talk, right? And get to know them. That's how friends are. That's how God is. God who is outside of time comes inside our time and takes earth clock time for us so we can experience him in time. You know, so that's why I encourage you to spend time with God because you're going to, God will come in your time and will, will let himself known to you. So, so I go, wow, I, I want you to be my friend too. So I says, sit down here at my kitchen table and I'll fix your meal. So I went and cooked, you know, and I talked to Gus, hang out, takes time. I made the bread like Sarah made the bread, but I didn't know how to make bread. I didn't put the yeast, you know, so the bread gets really hard, you know, by the time you cook it, it's like rock. I says, God, watch your teeth because this is not a good bread, but as best as I can, but I'm just hanging out with you. God loves to hang around and eat and drink with us, you know, it's amazing. That's how I grew up with God, my first year, like a honeymoon, read all these stories. I'll tell you later about some of the stories that impacted me massively and, and altered my DNA, you know, and, and that's why I expect it happens to you. You know, I'll tell you some of these stories, and when you take time, God will do the same thing for you. And your DNA will change everything about you. I don't care whether you're Christian or Muslim or, or not even believer at all, atheist like me. I, I know, I know what it's like to be a total atheist. And God will save you supernaturally in some way, in such a way that you will know that He's real, just like He saved me supernaturally, you know. And I'll tell you more about this down the road, because I, I, I love to teach you everything I know so that you could get inspired, you know, and you can know a guy like, like I have, like I know. And, um, and so eventually, you know, I grew up uh, in, with, with the things of the Lord and, be, and wanted to be a priest, a minister, a preacher, whatever you call it, pastor. So, so I got trained and ordained, you know, I went through a school. And, and I'm praying every day about Bulgaria, about my friends, about my mother, my rock and roll friends. I'm praying every day, sometimes hours a day. And, and, and uh, one day, uh, the Lord says, get ready, get ready. Communists are coming down, and I want you to go home. So I says, okay. So I called my mom. I says, I'm coming home. And that was in the fall of 1989. And sure enough, year, uh, Christmas, boom. Ceausescu in Romania died. You know, they killed him. I, I never forget that. They said the Antichrist died on Christmas Day. CNN announced that. It was an amazing statement. They shot him like a dog because they just hated him. Our, our president, our communist president, was lucky that he didn't get shot, that he got arrested and put in a house prison. You know, so the communists fell. In, the, in, the, in 1990, no more communism. It's like this, overnight. It was a shocking thing. Nobody could ever believe like that would possibly happen. But that's how it happened. But I was ready. I was already prepared by God. I even sort, saved up some money. I had the ticket ready, ready to go, money for ticket. And so I, I went there with my wife, Winnie. And um, I had so many neat stories that happened, you know. But the neatest story of this is, remember I told you about the yellow square, kind of like the Moscow red square in Bulgaria and Sofia. We had this yellow square. And the comments and this building, 
uh, on, a, on a balcony, and there, all their military might is going through the 